Hello, it's Deanie. Today I'm going to do the donut book tag, which was originally created by Josh from Literary Gladiators, and I was tagged by Pints and Paperbacks. I'll be linking both of their videos in the description. So this is a pretty sweet set of questions. However, donut spelled wrong. That is too long for donut. We go D-O-N-U-T, donut, in this household. But I won't quarrel with that too much, it's still a good tag. So the first prompt is classic. A classic book you feel everyone needs to read. For this, I'm choosing The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. And my French is a little rusty. I actually majored in it and studied it for eight years. Please don't make me say sentences in it though. So I'm choosing this because it's a pretty whimsical piece of work. It's actually considered a children's book, but it also touches on different subjects that even adults can relate to. And I know a lot of people kind of like go, ew, classics, but this is a pretty accessible classic. And it's fun, which is the opposite of a classic donut. But the next donut we have is Vanilla Frosted, a simple but engaging work. For this, I'm choosing Mouse by Art Spiegelman. This is an autobiographical set of graphic novels. Spiegelman shares the story of his father, Vladik, who had to survive the Holocaust in Hitler's Europe. It's told through a kind of interviewing style. Spiegelman is asking his father to recount the tales of when he had to go to a concentration camp and everything, but then it's also telling what's happened in the current day for them and the relationship between Spiegelman and his father. The art style is really simple, but it's also very dark and claustrophobic. And the way that Vladik tells his story from before, during, and after the Holocaust is done very matter-of-factly. Like, he doesn't pull any punches. It's very dark but still simple because of the words that are chosen and the artwork. And it's so very engaging. And definitely not a sugar-coated book. It's a hard read, but I would recommend it. The next donut prompt is Chocolate Frosted, your second favorite work from your favorite writer. And my favorite writer is Libba Bray. And my second favorite book from her is The Diviners. It's a YA historical fiction with like paranormal elements. In it, you have ghosts, evil spirits that wander around and kill people, even in your nightmares. Some people have special magical powers. And it's set in the 1920s in New York City. So that's a pretty fun historical background for a book. Next, we have Strawberry Frosted Donut, which is disgusting. It's a lesser known or studied work from a known writer you feel should be read or studied more frequently. And I have mainly a joke answer for this, and it's The Host by Stephanie Meyer. We all know Twilight. But not everyone has read The Host, and I love The Host. It has aliens, it has a love triangle, it is trashy, but I love it. And people complain about Twilight, and I want them to start complaining about The Host so I hear people talk about it. I don't think it deserves to be associated with strawberry frosted donuts, but that's besides the point. Next is The Glazed Donut, a writer that immediately immersed you. So I've only read one book by this author. But I was immediately immersed, and that is Andy Weir and his book, The Martian. When I first started reading it, I'm like, I'm on Mars. Andy Weir just sets the tone in the scene so well within the first nine words. And they are, I'm pretty much f That's my considered opinion. How much more immersed can you get? Next is the Jelly Donut, a work that contained more than you expected. For this, I've chosen Never World Wake by Marisha Pessel. It's a YA thriller about a group of friends who get in a car crash and then are in limbo indefinitely until they vote on the one person who gets to live and the rest have to die. So, you know, some high stakes there. I don't really read thrillers, so it's not like I had much to expect from it. But what I got was a bunch of just horrible characters who did heinous things at times and some dark subject matters that made you think about life in a way and what it means to live and how... The passage of time is actually very important to making life matter. So I expected nothing and got a lot of philosophical questions that made me go into an existential crisis. Not really, but may as well have. Next we have the Boston Cream Donut, a scholarly work you would recommend to a casual reader. So I went to grad school for my master's in public administration, and the book I'm going to recommend was one of our required readings for one of my classes, and it's one of the few books I actually read in its entirety because I actually enjoyed it. And it is Citizenville, How to Take the Town Square Digital and Reinvent Government by Gavin Newsom and Lisa Dickey. Essentially, it talks about how citizens should engage more in government because they can really have a big influence on it, especially if they start creating new digital tools to like make 
government better because as we probably have all noticed, the government when it comes to the digital era is kind of behind. And it also gives some like real life stories so you can really connect with what the book is trying to, you know, get people to do. It's actually a surprisingly fun quick read. Not like most government related books in my experience. Next donut is The Crawler, a work that makes you think of France. So fun fact, I not only studied French, I also have visited France three times. Don't go to Paris, it's overrated. Go to Southern France, it is so much better. Anyways, the book that makes me think of France is The Count of Monte Cristo, which is by Alexandre Dumas. Throughout my schooling, I believe I had to read it like three times. Once in middle school, which is way too young to start that book, and I read the abridged version and did not understand it. Second time was in high school in my French class and we read a sort of abridged version again and it was in French. Still didn't understand it. And then finally in undergrad for one of my French classes, but it was read in English and that is the time I actually enjoyed it. It's a good book, but like you have to be older, I think, to actually appreciate how complex it is. So yeah, super French. Next donut is the powdered sugar donut, a work that left you with evident emotions. So with this prompt comes a little bit of a story time. So the book I'm choosing is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. In it, we follow a high school girl who is struggling with OCD. She's also having to learn how to navigate friendships and relationships. And there's also a subplot murder mystery thing, but that's not why I'm suggesting this book for this prompt. I'm choosing it because of how powerful the OCD representation was in here. So this is kind of where my story time comes in. I have obsessive compulsive disorder and I've had it for four years now, but when it first manifested four years ago, it was very severe and I did not know how to explain any of it to anyone. And it was especially hard to get my parents to understand it. But then two years after my OCD started, the Turtles All the Way Down book came out. And after I read it, I immediately told my family, like, if you want to understand my OCD better, read this book because it moved me so much and it is such a great way for someone who might be struggling with explaining how OCD works or how their brain works to be like, hey, if you care and want to know, read this book. And I know it moved me, it moved my family. So really, if you're someone who doesn't understand OCD and wants to learn more about it, or you have someone that you know who has OCD, read this book. You'll be annoyed by the murder mystery subplot, but just ignore it. <laughs> So yeah, that's, that's my short story time. For the next donut, it's the Cider Donut, which doesn't sound great, but it's the perfect reading material to read in front of a fire in autumn. For this, I would suggest a kind of chunky book, preferably in hardback, so that if the fire starts getting low, you can kind of just either chuck a few pages in or the whole book itself. Keep the fire going. I just blasphemed about books. Next is the Donut Hole, a collection of short, accessible works or sections that you enjoyed. For this, I choose Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. It's not a collection of short works, but it is a short book that is told in verse. And if you've not read a book that is told in verse, then I do think it's a pretty accessible book to like get into that type of reading. And even though it's a pretty short work, it's very powerful and it deals with some difficult subjects like gun violence. Next donut is the Raspberry Frosted Donut, a book you would recommend to Homer Simpson. For this, I've chosen I Want My Hat Back by John Klassen, and I would recommend it to everyone because it is the cutest, sort of messed up children's book. Seriously, you should read it. Find it. Even if you just go to like a bookstore and find it and pick it up, it'll take five minutes to read. Seriously, just read it. And the next question is, what is your favorite kind of donut? And mine is a specific lemon blueberry donut that a local donut shop makes. So you can't even try it. Be jelly. But it has no jelly in it because jelly's gross. And lastly is time to make the donuts. A Dunkin' Donuts thing. I don't know. Who do you tag? And I tag anyone who wants to eat a donut right now. Which should be nearly everyone. So thanks for watching.